Hi, so I think that the worlds where intelligent life exists are probably all called Earth by their inhabitants. Here's why. So first, consider why do we call our planet Earth? The discovery of other worlds of the solar system visible to the naked eye is so ancient that it is probably lost to prehistory. For most of our time, they were mere dots of light wandering across the night sky. The Romans called the brightest of these wanderers Venus, for their goddess of beauty. The Hindus called her by a different name, Shukra, after a wise guru of the demons. Different cultures with different traditions, different mythologies, history, and language gave very different names to the planets that they could see in the night sky. But all of them, as far as I know, called this one Earth. The German word for the Earth is Erde. The French call her La Terre. The Russians, Zemlya, and Chinese, Ti Cho, which all mean, not surprisingly, land. The word land is used to differentiate between the environment in which we live, the ground, from the ones where we do not, like the ocean and the sky, the part of the cosmos that we can see but cannot touch. Regardless of our country, our language, and our culture, our most basic home was always land. It was always Earth. The discovery that the Earth is spherical dates to at least the time of ancient Greece. The speculation that it is not the center of the universe is also thousands of years old. Sometimes this idea was forgotten, or even suppressed, and in either case it was not widespread among the general public, who had other concerns on their mind. However, in recent centuries, as we invented the pendulum and the telescope, and began sharing our ideas with other people by printing books, the view that the Earth is actually a planet finally took root. The Earth home, land, joined the celestial wanderers. This is why I suspect that as social intelligent beings evolve on other terrestrial planets, as they develop abstract thinking and communication for cooperation, they too would have a name for the environment where they live, as opposed to the rest of the universe that they can see but cannot touch. They too would have an idea that there is something called ground. Perhaps it is drier than ours, perhaps wetter, but distinct from a mysterious realm beyond their reach, with a sun above, perhaps several, and planets they can see in the night. And when they discover that their world is a planet, or perhaps even a moon, the name it would inherit naturally is the one that they have been using all along, a name for their home environment, passed on to them from previous generations. It would be land, it would be earth, by any other name. So, in other words, in the native language of Mr. Spock, Vulcan actually means Earth. Now, it wouldn't be exactly land for the creatures that have evolved on ocean worlds, or for those that live in the seas encased by ice, like those of Europa, or for the inhabitants of the atmospheres of gas giants. But if such beings exist, then I suppose that instead of land, they would also name their planet using a word that describes their native environment, which they would use to distinguish from that which is beyond their reach. To them, the meaning of the name of their world would be the same as Earth is to us. Of course, this is merely a hypothesis, since we don't know of any aliens, but I think this is a pretty reasonable one. Perhaps there are even greater similarities between thinking social animals, separated by vast oceans of space and time, than just how they name their world. But that's another topic.